The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, folks. This is Jack Olsop from Storagecraft. Hope we're all well today. The small webinar we're doing this morning is configuring Shadow Protect for success. Ten major points to get this right. We have produced a document. The marketing department have promised me that within 30 days it will be published and emailed to each and every one of you. Um, I will go through the, the basics of that document now. The first point that I'd like to talk about is what we call SP Diagnostics. The reasons behind it and why it is very beneficial for you to use. So let's hit the sort of run support mode, run the diagnostics. It will produce five files. I'm actually going to get it to drop out one of those files today so that we can save a bit of time. The MS Info 32 file, I will not get that done. So here I'm just going to go cancel and it'll finish. And it'll say display, so I'm just going to go close. Let's go up to documents, tail end of the documents. There's the four files that it will produce. As you can see, there's a copy of the system and application event logs. IP configuration and SP diagnostics. If we can take two minutes to have a look at this. This is my particular laptop that we're talking about today. Useful information that we find in here is obviously the OS page file. Now it says here the total page file size is less than optimal and that is correct. However, you will note that the page file is a fixed size. The start size and end size are the same. More about that in a moment. Um, IRP stack size, yes, that's cool. Reboots, no. And then we can go through and we've got what sort of controllers, disk utilization. I've got a slight problem on my C drive. I'm starting to run out of a bit of space. Network adapters. The information is very useful to us. Then we go into the whole VSS thing. We can see what's there, if there's any errors, whatever. Um, shadow copies, we'll talk about that again shortly. Tribute applications, which we'll just sidestep at the moment. Some bloke's got too much junk on his laptop, but that's all right. The QFE, the quick fixes from Microsoft, the hot patches, whatever, they are all listed here. That is also very useful for us. There's a SQL section if there's SQL installed and as you can see I am running SQL 2008 R2 Service Pack 1 production database. It gives us all the appropriate information that I, as a support person, am looking for in particular the VDIs and it tells me what version of the VDIs we are running. Very critical information for support when it comes time to diagnose issues with 2005 SQL. It tells me the versions of Shadow Protect and I'll quickly bypass that because I'm obviously running some beta versions as tests. Um, it tells us the version of STC, VSM, VSNAP, VSS, which are all critical for us, Image Manager and a few other issues. But more importantly down the bottom here it lists the knowledge base articles that you can go to to find out what the problems are with, for the example, this one here, the page pool size. Um, I'll talk more about that as well. It says go to item number five and that's where we go to get that information. So SP Diagnostics can be very useful for predetermining issues for yourself. We try to make it as as effective as possible. Okay, so we'll move on now. The ten major points. The first one that I will always talk about is configuring Windows. As we know, there's Windows and there's Windows. A properly configured system is extremely beneficial. So the first thing we'll just quickly look at is the page file. Now you'll see here 
I've got two physical disks in this machine. Ignore this H drive. That is my fixed image repository. The two hard drives I've got are the C and E is on the same spindle and F is on the other spindle uh, is a separate hard drive itself. You'll notice that I do not have any page file on the C drive, which means that if I ever get a memory dump, all I'm going to get is a kernel mini dump, not a full memory dump. If you want that, then please configure a fixed size page file on the C drive. However, I've selected the E drive for my page file, and yes, it is half the size it should be, because I currently have 8 gig of memory in this machine. That is not recommended. It should really be a minimum of one and a half, preferably twice the size. Um, why should you have a fixed size page file? Okay, the operating system doesn't have to pause at all to expand it if required. And if it is a system managed page file, you will end up with what's called a fragmented page file, which will slow the system down even further and make Shadow Protect work that much harder to exclude the page file from the backup. Okay, so system managers is not recommended at all. Custom, fixed initial, fixed maximum size, as you see there, is important. Um, in the document, we make some recommendations, and I'll just briefly mention what they are. Uh, file servers, I recommend twice the size of physical memory. SQL, four times physical memory, spread over a couple of volumes would be ideal. Um, unless the physical memory is equal to or greater than 32 gig, then quite obviously um, twice the size. And the same for SQL 2010, um, four times physical memory, unless the physical memory is greater or equal to 32 gig, then twice the size. Okay. The next thing we talk about configuring Windows is we have a best practice guide and it refers to, I'll quickly show it to you folks, just so you can see. It's called this one, Best Practices Guide number seven. And it is in the document when you receive it, Shadow Protect Image Manager Server Tuning. This is memory tuning, folks. I'll just quickly open it for you and we'll go to the relevance section. The relevance section is to do with memory management. This is required for even a standard file server. So for most servers today, SBS servers, file servers, image manager servers, strongly recommend that this gets done. These basic concepts have been around since NT4 days and it just makes sure that there's enough kernel memory available to do the job required of the machine. So you don't ever run out of uh, system resources. So it talks about page pool size, uh, page usage, session pool, session view, landman server. IRP stack size is critical because the default size of 15 is just way too low. So that's that part of it. In the current versions of uh, Shadow Protect, we strongly recommend that the C++ 2005 SP1 x86 redistributables are applied. Uh, the document refers to those. And the other thing we'll quickly look at is configuring Windows, folks. So we'll just close up some of this stuff. Um, I don't have any shares on this machine, obviously, but the concept is the same, previous versions. Okay? I don't have any previous versions enabled on this machine at all. It's all been turned off. I strongly recommend that previous versions, especially on SPS boxes, is disabled. And I'll show you why. If I go to this, uh, we'll pick on the eDrive for a moment. System volume information tells me go away. Okay, that's fine. On this one, I've modified permissions so we can get in. 
and previous versions information is stored in the system volume information. And please remember previous versions, the basics of it is it enumerates the shares per volume, the files and folders in those shares will keep 30 days sorry, 64 versions for 30 days based on 10% of the disk space. All right, that information is stored in this particular folder. So every time you back up with Shadow Protect, we're also backing all of this up. Problem. The one major problem is after a period of time, the previous versions as people know it, has a whole bunch of folders in it and not a lot of files because folders are uh, folders have changed and you, it's very difficult to get bits and pieces back out of it. Then we're also backing it all up again with Shadow Protect. Because we can back up servers every 15 minutes, we can actually do something far better than previous versions. And the default for previous versions is 7 o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock at lunchtime. So the best it can do is like twice a day. You can configure it for a few more, but you soon run out of disk space and a whole bunch of problems from there. Now, guys, I will leave, ask you to leave all questions towards the end um, so that we can answer everybody's questions then. Okay, configure applications. Now, in the document, I refer to Exchange 2003, 7 and 2010. And there is best practices guides listed there. For example, the if I go back into the best practice guides area here, folks, is where I've written them. Um, these ones is what's referenced on the document. And it talks particularly about where we store database files, where we store log files, and critically, the system path location or the system files path, whichever version of Exchange you happen to use, it is the checkpoint file. It is extremely important that that file exists where the database are. Most people today don't shift that, and they need to. However, SQL. There are a couple of knowledge base articles on SQL. And the first one is obviously this one up here, which refers to SQL VDI errors. And the other one we refer to in the document is this one, SQL Maintenance Plans versus Shadow Protect, the pros and cons. You need to understand this one because it is important. However, having gone down that path now, let us just have a look. I, by the way, folks, SQL is installed in here. There's my SQL, but I did a custom install of SQL and I have put my databases down here. But I did a custom install, folks, so that all my databases are on the same physical volume for high performance, obviously, in a true enterprise SQL Server, you would have the databases on one and the log file somewhere else. That's fine. Just remember that everything is in the same basic area. So all the system databases should be with the production database. The log files for the production database should be on another file, on another spindle, of course. It is critical because this way, when I go to do a backup of this machine, which I will show you, I am backing up those three volumes, the C, the E and the F, in single jobs. And I will never have a restoration issue. Okay, the next thing that we need to talk about, 